Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I'm going to do a video that a lot of you have been asking about, which is how do you get Windows to boot up on an external drive using a Mac? And a lot of people were very eager to see this video. I was going to put it on my second channel, but I had such a large interest in this, I'm going to put it on this one. And I want to say a couple of things up front, because this worked for me, it may not work for you, and I tried doing this before with the uh, Steam machine that I reviewed earlier in the year, and I get so many questions to this day about certain things not working for certain people. I can't, unfortunately, provide individual support to everyone, but uh, what you're about to see before your eyes is what works for me, and hopefully it will work for you as well. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to install Windows 10 on this little SSD, and then we're going to boot it up on this new MacBook Pro uh, just with with this so we don't need to install anything on the internal hard drive for the Mac. Now there are better ways to run Windows 10 on a Mac. In fact, you can use uh, Apple's Boot Camp software, which will partition a portion of your drive, and uh, that will be a much easier process than what you're about to see here. They've actually made it very simple to have a dual booting scenario on your Mac. But the reason why I am installing it on an external SSD is that I only have 512 gigabytes of storage on this machine, and I don't want to dedicate you know, 50 gigs or more uh, to Windows when I only use it, use it occasionally when I'm out in the road and I want to play a game or something. So that is why uh, we're going the external route. Another way to run Windows on the Mac is to use virtualization. There are uh, paid commercial software out there like Parallels and VMware. Uh, there's also some freeware options out there too that will allow you to boot up Windows inside of your Mac OS X installation. And if you are not playing games, that's probably the best way to go because you could install uh, the VMware image on an external drive and only plug it in when you need it and it's great for you know word processing and database applications and coding and everything else there won't be uh, too much of a performance hit but I like to run Windows natively when I want to play games because uh, there's no overhead of the host operating system coming into play here which is why uh, virtualization isn't so great for gaming but uh, probably great for everything else so there you have it there are two better ways to do what you're about to do but if you are really eager to get Windows booted natively on your Mac on a solid state drive then keep watching that's what we're going to do right now. Now, there are a few prerequisites that you need to have before you get into all of this. So the first thing you need, of course, is the external SSD. I've got this one here from PNY. It's a 480 gigabyte external SSD. I should mention in the interest of full disclosure that PNY provided this little drive to the channel free of charge. I'll be reviewing this a little later in the month. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. And another prerequisite is going to be a Windows PC like this one here. And again, this one was provided by Dell. Uh, same disclaimers apply as they did on the PNY drive here. Uh, so you definitely want to uh, get a Windows PC up and running because there is a little utility, which is our third prerequisite, called Rufus, which is a way of getting uh, the Windows 10 to boot a certain way on this external drive. When we get to the Rufus period of this video, uh, you will get a feel for how all of that works. I've got links to all of these things down below in the video description. Uh, you also need some way of transferring data between the Mac and the Windows device. So a network connection is probably fine, but you might want to get a USB stick or something like that out there. Uh, in this video, we're going to use a card reader because uh, none of my USB sticks currently work on this new Mac with the, uh, the USB Type-C ports, but I have an adapter for this. So I'm going to be copying files uh, to this card, transferring them to the PC, uh, for getting our boot drive ready using Rufus. Uh, you're also going to need a separate USB keyboard and mouse because when this boots up for the first time, the Mac, at least this new Mac, uh, the keyboard and trackpad do not work natively in Windows without a driver, which is what you're going to install uh, in this process. So what I did is I've got this uh, Logitech keyboard and mouse that I uh, bought a while ago, and you have to use the USB dongle for that. And if you've got the newer Mac, you know this is becoming a comedy hour here with all these dongles, uh, you will need some way to get a standard USB port uh, onto your Mac, and I'm using this uh, Apple connector that I got with the MacBook to do so, but uh, any USB adapter should work. But remember, you're not going to have Bluetooth until you get the drivers installed, so you need to have a USB keyboard and mouse attached. What I like about this one is that its little dongle here will carry both the keyboard and trackpad data uh, back to the computer, so you definitely need to get that going. Uh, you also need to download a Windows 10 ISO file, and you need to download it on the Mac, and this is where a lot of people got tripped up on my review of the Steam machine, because because 
Uh, if you are on a Windows browser, uh, Microsoft will assume that you can just download the Windows creation tool for their, uh, for their operating system, which works fine on Windows, but the tool that it, the thing that it downloads via that tool does not allow you to create what's called the Windows to go installation, which allows it to boot off of the uh, SSD. So you have to get on your Mac and download this ISO file first. So you go to uh, this Microsoft page. Again, I'll link to this down below in the video description. I just Googled uh, Windows 10 ISO download and I got to this page, but I'll put the link to what I'm seeing right here down below for you. And what you're gonna do here is select the Windows 10 edition that you want. So I'll just say Windows 10. You'll hit confirm. Uh, after you go through this process, you need to choose the language that you're going to be installing. So uh, I speak uh, United States English here, so I will find English. And uh, you can, of course, choose the language that uh, best fits your needs and click confirm. And then uh, you want to download the 64-bit ISO and then let that go. It's gonna be about four gigabytes or so. And then copy that file uh, to your uh, external storage device so that we can move it over to the Windows machine. So now that you have all those things in place, uh, let's go into how to get all of this working. All right, so we are ready to start copying some files. What I did do in the interest of time was copied over that large ISO file that we downloaded from Microsoft. So that again is a 4.38 gigabyte file. And I put that on the card reader here, which we're going to then uh, take and put into the Windows computer when we're ready to start creating our uh, SSD bootable disk. Now, the other thing you need to do is get some drivers and uh, those live in the Boot Camp Assistant. Probably the quickest way to get to it is to hit your spotlight icon up here and just type in Boot Camp and uh, you will get a quick link over to that utility. And what this does is uh, basically gets you into the boot camp process if you were to try to install Windows natively on your computer, which you're not going to do, but there is a uh, little option on this app that we need to do to get our driver. So what will happen here is if you wanted to install Windows natively on your device here, uh, this is where you would do the partitioning and uh, install it the Apple, uh, the Apple way, but we're going to be doing it the, 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 the lawn way, I guess, here. Uh, so what we're going to do instead of going through this process, and you definitely definitely don't want to do this process here. Uh, you want to go instead over to Action and then Download Windows Software. And what this will do uh, is download all of those drivers to your drive here. So just select your Downloads folder, hit Save, and it's going to download every driver that we need when we get uh, the Windows uh, portion of this computer booted up. So if we go over to my Downloads folder now, you'll see we've got a folder here called Windows Support. And in here is a bunch of drivers that we're going to need to install uh, once we're done with this process. So what I'm going to do is just copy this entire folder over to that SD card that we're going to be bringing over to our Windows machine. And it's about 880 megabytes. So we're going to let this finish copying. And then we're going to go over to the Windows computer and start uh, the process of getting our SSD ready for booting. All right, so we've got the Mac now shut down. We're going to switch now to our Windows computer to get uh, the SSD prepared. So what I'm gonna do now is take this SSD and plug it into our Windows device here. And we're going to uh, switch over to the uh, desktop now of the Windows machine to finish this process off. So uh, the drive is plugged in. And what we're gonna do is go over to Rufus and uh, select the drive on the list of available devices here. Now this one is showing up. Uh, it's that 480 gigabyte drive that I pulled in and, it, and it's confirming that because I've got the mouse over here and it's saying the PNY Elite, that's what we want. Now, if for some reason your drive does not show up on this list, what you need to do is click on this little arrow here and have it list USB hard drives because uh, sometimes it will uh, not come across as the right kind of USB device and you need to uh, tip Rufus off as to what you've got installed. So uh, for this one, it showed up as a regular USB device. Uh, this Samsung drive, which I'm currently using with my Mac, uh, doesn't seem to work the same way. So uh, I had to click that option on here. So your mileage, of course, will vary. Another important thing to note as we're going through this process is that not every drive is compatible with this and you're not going to know it's not compatible until you try it. So I do know for a fact that uh, the Samsung drive here that I'm using uh, does work. This is the Samsung T3. I have another SSD from, uh, from SanDisk that worked as well. And we're going to find out in the course of this video whether or not this PNY drive is compatible here. So this will be a good uh, thing to try out and hopefully it'll work when we get uh, further on in the process here. So uh, we've got that drive selected. What we're going to do now is go over to uh, this icon here to select the drive image. And what we're going to do is uh, make sure that our SD card is selected. I'm going to select that uh, Windows 10 driver, uh, Windows 10 ISO that we downloaded earlier, that 4.3 gig file. I'm going to click open on there and you can see now uh, Rufus is ready to go. Now there's an option that will pop up after we selected that. And the important thing to click here 
is Windows to Go, not standard Windows installation. So make sure Windows to Go is selected. And again, if you download this ISO with a Windows computer, you will likely not have this option available to you. That is why we downloaded the ISO on the Mac, uh, because for some reason, the Windows uh, Media Creation Tool will not give you a compatible image with Windows to Go. So remember, very important here, Windows to Go needs to be selected. Uh, you just want to go back and just verify that you have the right drive selected, because this will overwrite uh, anything that you are currently pointing it to. So uh, you definitely want to be careful here. I will take no responsibility if you overwrite a drive that you weren't supposed to overwrite. And what I'm going to do now is click Start. And this is going to take a while, so we're going to uh, heed its warning here and uh, erase that drive. And this will probably take uh, probably a good uh, 20 minutes or more. So I'm going to let this kind of write out. Some drives go quicker, others go slower. And then when it's done, we will continue the process of getting our Mac to boot up Windows. All right, so it looks like we are done now with the formatting of our drive with Rufus. We can close Rufus now. And what we'll see in our Windows Explorer here that we have a new drive on the list of drives here. I'm just going to open this up into a new window. And you can see now we've got uh, pretty much the entire Windows installation here now installed uh, on this little SSD. Now what I want to do before we do anything else is copy over those Windows drivers that we downloaded on the Mac earlier because uh, it's going to be a lot easier to have these drivers located on the SSD here uh, versus having to try to get a USB drive working when we have no drivers available to us. So we're going to let this copy over and then when this is done, uh, we're going to go over to the Mac and boot it up off of this SSD and continue the process. All right, so now we are ready to start the dongle palooza process here. So we're going to take our adapter here so that we can get a regular USB device attached. We're going to plug that into there and then attach that to one of our free USB Type-C ports. Remember, this dongle is for our uh, keyboard and trackpad combo device here because we cannot use the keyboard and trackpad when we first boot up. I'm also going to now plug in the SSD, and I was able to find, these are cheap cables too, um, a, a micro USB 3 connector to USB Type-C. So I'm able to get this drive uh, connected very inexpensively here to the uh, Mac. So we're just going to plug that one into the other port here, and it can plug into any port. So as long as you have the port installed, uh, you are ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is turn the Mac on, and the keyboard will work initially because you have to hold down the Option key uh, when we boot now because we have to give the Mac instructions as to uh, which drive to boot from. So I'm going to uh, now hit that key there. You can see we have an option here. I'm going to select uh, this one here. It's going to show up as EFI boot. I'm going to hit enter on that, and then we'll see if this drive works or not, because if it doesn't work, you're not going to get further from here. You will see a blank screen for a little bit, and then you will see the Windows icon. Chances are, if you get to this part, uh, you are in good shape and your drive is compatible. If for some reason it's blank for a long period of time, or uh, this swirly thing goes for hours on end, then you are out of luck and have to find a different drive, but uh, generally this should work. Now the first boot is going to take a while, because uh, it has to get it, whatever it needs to do done, uh, and then it'll boot up a lot quicker in the future. And I'm just going to let this thing do whatever it is it's doing, and then uh, we will continue on with our next steps. And also, one last thing while we're waiting for this thing to get back up and running, it might reboot your computer in the process. And if it does, you're going to need to look for that and then hold down the Option key again to select that EFI boot, because the Mac will always default uh, to loading back off of the partition that's on its native drive here. So if you walk away and you come back and you're back on the Mac OS X operating system, uh, just do the restart, hold down the Option key again, and reselect the drive, and that will get you back into everything so you can keep working. But let's let this finish up, and then we'll put some drivers on it. All right, so our reboot happened, and you'll see here I can move the mouse around with my uh, trackpad keyboard combo here, but it doesn't work yet on the Mac itself, because again, at least on this Mac, the drivers have not been installed yet. Now, I should mention, this is going to work on just about any Mac out there. This is not limited to just the new Macs here, uh, but you might run into this problem even on an older Mac too, so just have that keyboard and trackpad ready just in case. Uh, so I'm going to just set my time zone here, and we will continue uh, onward with our Windows installation. The rest of this will actually be very similar to what it's like to install Windows on a regular PC. Uh, so we can go ahead and do that. Now, you will come to a product key uh, inquiry here. We can, uh, in this instance, say do this later, uh, but you will need at some point to activate Windows. And I was able to uh, get Windows activated. I purchased a key, and I was able to use that key and activate Windows. However, I believe that activation is going to be limited to just this computer. If I were to take this drive out and try to run it on a different computer, I will likely will not have it activated on that machine. It's tied to the hardware ID here. So unless you have an enterprise license, 
Uh, this is not as portable, but uh, I think if you are looking to run this on your Mac, you're probably going to be running it on uh, one Mac only. So I'm gonna let this finish up and then we will get on with the drivers. All right, so here we are on the Windows desktop. Again, our mouse doesn't yet work because we have to get those drivers installed. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, click on the Windows Explorer here and I'm gonna try to zoom the camera in a bit so you can see a little bit better just because I can't hook it up to the video system just yet. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is go over to uh, the, uh, this PC option here and uh, just go ahead and look at my hard drive. And you remember we copied over that Windows support directory. Well, this is where we're going to get everything installed. So uh, in this uh, directory is another folder called Bootcamp. And we're going to click on that, and there is a setup icon here that we're going to click. We're going to hit yes, and uh, in true Apple spirit, all you have to do here is just accept the terms of the license agreement, click install, and then sit back. Because when this is done, uh, this Mac will be running Windows pretty much as well as it runs Mac OS X. It's actually that simple to get the drivers going. So this does take a little bit of time, but once it is all done, uh, we will have everything up and running. You can see the video drivers just got themselves installed now, and uh, we'll be seeing a little bit more of the flickering going on here throughout this process, but uh, it is a pretty quick and easy thing, and we're just going to let this uh, continue running out, and when it's done, we'll see how well our new Windows installation works. Stay tuned. All right, we had one more reboot to do, so we're going to go back and hold down the Option key again, and then select EFI Boot to get back into Windows, and then I believe uh, we should be up and running with Windows installed on this little SSD. So let's see uh, what happens here as everything comes to life. Now, some people have talked about the fact that Windows will run faster if we installed it on the native drive here with Boot Camp, and that is correct. While these uh, little SSDs are a lot faster than external hard drives, uh, they don't do as well with random reads of data like you would normally get uh, happening here when you're loading an operating system. So I would agree with those who say that it might run a little faster insofar as how fast things load up uh, if you are just installing it with native boot camp but of course you sacrifice your ability to uh, keep your drive fully available for your OS 10 applications at the same time so again for me uh, playing games I haven't noticed that much of a difference here so now uh, we've got the Windows desktop back up and running everything is here we've got our AMD drivers installed uh, so we could install Steam now and get uh, to playing games and doing all the things that I did in that uh, Windows 10 uh, video that I did earlier with this same computer and that's pretty much it it works and it works great and what's awesome is that we do have these little SSDs now that are very rugged you can throw them in your bag and whenever you need to get native Windows booted up you just plug it in hold down the option key and you're good to go so a really quick and easy way uh, to get Windows installed without having to go through boot camp and partition your drive in the process. Uh, your mileage, of course, will vary. So if it doesn't boot the first time, try a different disk. It will also work with regular external hard drives too, but it'll be slower, obviously, because those drives tend to be slower. So I really do uh, recommend going with these little SSDs to get the job done. But as you can see here, it really works quite well. Let me know if you have some issues down below in the comments. I'm not gonna be able to help everybody out, but I think if you follow what I did here. I'll put some more uh, description of the different things you need down below in the description uh, portion of the video here, and I think you should be in good shape. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.